Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today I would like to talk about the subject that's on a lot of people's minds and more specifically on a lot of drone pilots minds and that is remote ID and more specifically I like to talk about is it going to succeed, is it going to fail, can it be forced onto you and uh, what I personally just think about remote ID overall. Now. Anything I say in this video is not legal advice, it's basically just my opinion of what can happen, what may happen, or uh, what should or should not happen. Uh, I'm not a, an attorney, I am not an engineer, just a drone pilot that views flying drones as a hobby and as a way to make a really good income. So. For example, with me I have my Mini 3 Pro. Now, the drone is uh, registered, even though it's under 250 grams, but when you have a Part 107 license, you have to register all of your drones. Uh, it's just one of those catch-22s things. So, this is a sub-250 gram drone which I just happen to have with me because I'm gonna probably fly it right now uh, what I think about it when I think about remote ID well how they're gonna implement it is it gonna be a firmware update well what if I don't want to update my firmware what if everything with this drone the way the firmware operates the way the drone flies I like I mean, every time you update the firmware, even if they're gonna change the code only to include remote ID, uh, it's it can still mess with the code. I mean, one wrong character in the code can turn a great flying drone into a overpriced paperweight. So, I mean, personally, I don't want to update the firmware unless I really have to and no company should have to force that onto you now I think right now I have the yeah I have the uh, small battery and so this truly is a sub 250 gram drone uh, what else can they do well they can ask you to sort of like buy some sort of module and install it on top of the drone. Now, while this may be, uh, this may work for over 250 gram drones, anything, even LED light, if you put it on top of sub 250 gram drone, which most of them are like 248, 249 grams, it automatically puts this drone in a different category. Uh, for commercial pilots, so for Part 107 licensed pilots, that doesn't make really too much of a difference. But for uh, leisure pilots, for individuals who don't have a Part 107 license and don't have their drone registered because it's sub 250 grams, that puts them in a different category. Now, if they have anything attached to the drone, like a small module that includes a remote ID or even if they have their FPV drone which may require remote ID now it puts them in a different category now they have to register their drone so that's another issue that I see with remote ID I don't know how they're going to go around it uh, another issue which comes to drones let's remember let's go back to FAA FAA is all about safety safe operation of aerial vehicles or anything that flies if you attach anything onto the drone anywhere on top on the bottom that's not part of the design that's not supposed to go there originally and let's just I mean let's think government agencies they like to rush through things so uh, anything attached that doesn't go as part of the design of the drone or part of design of the aerial vehicle 
it, it's going to increase drag it's going to shift the center of gravity it's going to just mess with the design and it can render the flying device or UAV either unsafe for our operation or a less safe or even compromised because for example uh, the way the props rotate I mean they don't interfere with each other but you attach something on top of the drone and for some reason if during in-flight it detaches it can knock one of the propellers off and the drone will fall down below and may injure somebody or cause property damage so again it's something that needs to be considered uh, I had a different recommendation for remote ID uh, remote ID with for example specifically with DJI existed for years it's called DJI uh, Aeroscope <laughs> it automatically it's already in the code it automatically knows every time a DJI drone takes off a lot of uh, government installations and a lot of airports do have DJI Aeroscope they just don't talk about it because uh, then people would probably be weary and not want to fly around those installations but uh, I'll bring up the DJI Aeroscope because I brought it up in previous videos it's a sort of rough version of remote ID the radius of it is if you have a portable unit I think it's up to five mile radius if you have a stationary unit which it, most places probably would have uh, it's up to 50 mile radius so within those 50 mile radius I mean just think about the area it covers so it's uh, 50 miles radius uh, I guess the area is pi r squared so it's 50 times 50 uh, it's two and a half thousand it's like almost eight thousand or more square miles one stationary DJI scope covers so I mean they know that you're flying if they have one of those units they know where the pilot is they know where the drone is they know the serial number of the drone uh, and if the drone is registered they automatically know who the pilot is so they know this uh, I guess bringing about remote ID they just want to include all the drones so which brings me to my next point who should be able to access the information from remote ID should it be you as a concerned neighbor or concerned resident or should it be just emergency services should it be airports should it be just law enforcement who should be able to access that information and with that information comes education because law enforcement for the most part they have no clue I'm sorry to say this but it's true for the most part regular law enforcement they have no clue when it comes to UAV regulations so if they see a drone flying they're like oh uh, well I got a complaint I gotta go check it out they will get complaints all the time from concerned citizens that they see a drone but let's face it drones are becoming used like everyday use of drones is becoming more and more available to everybody people are buying drones people are flying drones they see a drone it's like oh that drone must be spying or that drone that drone pilot is up to no good let's call the cops that's gonna create stress on law enforcement that is going to create more calls to police uh, from concerned citizens do we really need this so i mean making that information available to law enforcement would probably be a good thing but making that information about who the pilot is where the pilot is registered his address his phone number or even his name i mean not even his phone number just his name first and last name making that information available to the public isn't that uh, like infringement on your personal rights uh, as a pilot shouldn't you have some rights to privacy 
because for example if i'm flying if i'm doing the job and all of a sudden i get a phone call from a concerned citizen it's like are you flying in my area i see you on my remote id app yeah, I'm flying in your area. Well, stop flying or I'm going to call the cops. Okay, go ahead. So, but it's wasting my time. Now it's going to waste law enforcement's time. Even if I'm flying completely legally. So for me, remote ID, currently, the way it's going to probably work does not make that much sense. Create something like DJI Aeroscope that's US made that detects all drones and provide it to those places that need it so we're talking about military bases because i've talked to military personnel i live right next to a military base and their concern is drones flying near military bases so military bases government installations uh drones should not be anywhere near government installations should not be anywhere near prisons should not be anywhere near police stations or any government installation so government installations military bases airports drone unless they're doing a job because i mean the airport i live next to is right dead center in the middle of the neighborhood and you may have to do a job that's right next to the airport you should be able to get that clearance from FAA, but, and I talked to, well, I didn't talk. I requested sometimes clearance from FAA and sometimes they denied me. Sometimes they appro approved me, but they said uh, for something that close to an airport, uh, I believe their text said one sixteenth of a mile. So basically if I'm recording the house for real estate, I have to stand right next to the house, lift the drone up a couple, like 50, a hundred feet, take the picture of the house and land the drone. I can't be flying off in any direction because I'm so close to the airport. So airports should have that because you should keep the phone lines for the airport clear. They should have something that like DJI Aeroscope, which been around for years. I've seen it work. It works. DJI Aeroscope, but for all drones. And that should be, I don't know, it should detect radio signal based. I mean, we can detect radio signals. If radio signal is up in the air, it's most definitely either an airplane or a drone. We're not gonna have birds flying around with radio signals and people cannot be a hundred feet in the air because people can't fly. So <laughs> radio signals like pick up cell phone signals from cell phone towers, uh, pick up just radio frequencies, five, like, the gigahertz frequencies it's possible the technology is there they just don't like to talk about it and make that available to the places that need it available the places that need to be aware of any drones in the area because some consumers not part 107 commercial pilots most part 107 commercial licensed pilots are very responsible a lot of consumers that are flying for leisure are very irresponsible. I mean, probably half of them don't even register their drones. The people I talked to, they didn't even know they had to register their, their drones. So education, proper education comes into play. But create a system. It may take a couple years because drones are fairly new, but drones are not going away. Create a system where education is first and then keeping track of all the drones up in the air is second because edu proper education for pilots for potential pilots i'm not talking about commercial pilots for leisure pilots may play a better role in regulating drone traffic and may reduce stress on government agencies than forcing or implementing something like remote ID onto everybody. That's my personal opinion. I mean, I would hate to see, for example, let's say I use my Mini 3 Pro, which is a drone I love. Hate to see something have to be attached to it and have this drone crash because of that.
that would be ridiculous and even more ridiculous and even more stupid if the drone crashes and causes either personal injury or property damage because something that had to be attached to it so that's my personal opinion um, I would love to hear your thoughts on remote ID in the comments please leave those and I'll probably address them in the future videos because remote ID is probably coming is it gonna roll out this fall I don't know I mean it wouldn't be the first time government rushed to roll something out that did more harm than good or uh, it wouldn't be the first time when they backtracked and said like you know we need to rethink this so whether or not it's going to happen I don't know should it happen my personal opinion no we don't need remote ID create like I said create something like DJI Aeroscope that keeps tracks of keeps track of all drones in the air and all the pilots because I mean I'm from Ukraine I know they can detect where the drone is based on the radio signal because all drones operate well most drones operate via radio signal and where the remote control is that sending that and receiving radio signal is also located it's possible just put some thought behind it and we'll all be uh, much happier as far as somebody knowing where I am or where my drone is when I'm flying it as long as it's a government entity I don't mind if it's a concerned citizen who doesn't like drones flying around his personal airspace yeah I do mind so thank you guys for watching I would love to hear your thoughts on it please leave a like for this video subscribe to the channel and see you guys later